Hi, I'm Casey Seiler, the editor of the Times Union. It is my great pleasure to be uh, joined, uh, virtually at least, by uh, William Kennedy, the, uh, the great Capital Region author and man of letters, and his son, Brendan Kennedy, who I've known for a good long time and who, with me, will be on the bill uh, on Monday, October 4th at the new location of Capital Repertory Theater in a benefit for Wizards Wardrobe, a terrific Capital Region nonprofit that works uh, to build uh, child literacy and uh, an education in general. Uh, you can go to Wizards Wardrobe's website at wizardswardrobe.org to find out more about this event, which will, in addition to uh, Kennedy's father and son, include a number of other notable uh, authors, including Joseph Bruchak and Elizabeth Brundage. Uh, it starts, uh, the doors open, I should say, at 6.15. The program starts at seven o'clock with discussion and reading of some terrific uh, children's literature. It will be uh, an excellent evening for, for fans of, of, uh, of children's literature and books in general. Um, okay, I want to go uh, to speak to both of you about the two uh, children's books that you collaborated on that I, I'm pretty sure might be singular in the history of world letters, uh, father and son, collaborating on a, not one, but two projects. The two books that, um, that you worked on together are Charlie Malarkey and the Belly Button Machine in 1986. And I will point out that that comes uh, in Bill Kennedy's uh, output right between Ironweed, which uh, you of course won the Pulitzer Prize for, and Quinn's book. And then uh, coming later in 1994 with Charlie McCarthy and the Singing Moose. Charlie Malarkey. So what did I say? Did I say Charlie McCarthy? McCarthy? Charlie McCarthy is another uh, children's character. <laughs> yes, I, I'm. I'm. I'm crossing the. Uh, I'm crossing the ventriloquist dummy with with your creation. <laughs> forgive me. So I, I went deep into the Times Union's archives uh, to 1986. And I found uh, the, a, a short item on the book review party, which was at the Hampton Plaza Ballroom at, I believe, the foot of uh, State Street. Uh, and uh, if I may, the Elder Kennedy, the Pulitzer Prize winner, displayed his usual magnetism, attracting all manner of novelists, poets, serious readers, and would-be published writers to, the, to his circle of conversation. And there was his son, Brendan, a junior at Doan Stewart School and now a published co-author looking like he stepped right out of the fashion forward pages of GQ, European cut wool suit, bold striped shirt and silk, and silk tie, voguish haircut. So I, I guess, Brendan, my first question would go to you. What was it like uh, at that uh, relatively tender age to, to be collaborating on a book with your uh, celebrated father? Uh, it was well. The, the book party was pretty fantastic. Um, the book itself had actually uh, come long before that. Um, we had uh, initially started it um, as a bedtime story when I was probably five or six, um, five. Um, and when I would, I, I was, uh, I guess, being uh, read a bedtime story, uh, and um, my belly button was sticking up, and sort of the origin was, he said, "Well, uh, you know, uh, once upon a time there was a kid named Charlie Malarkey, and he." woke up and his belly button was gone. Um, and then it was a series of just sort of questions uh, about what happened next uh, that sort of formed the story and it went from there, but we actually did finish it at, uh, uh, at a later date and sent it around um, and it received some uh, very vivacious rejections um, <laughs> with, <laughs> with comments like uh, it was too Freudian and or too scary, the concept of losing your belly button would terrify children. Um, but, um, but it turns out it's actually just pretty funny. Just one night, uh, Brennan was in, already in bed. He was five years old and his belly button was out. And so I, <clears throat> I said, well, uh, once upon a time, there was a kid named Charlie Milwaukee or something. And then I started telling the story. And I got so far <clears throat> and I ran out of story. So I said, okay, I'll to be continued tomorrow night. And so I uh, thought about it during the day and I didn't do much about it, but I made a couple of notes maybe. And uh, 
And so I, the next night, uh, you know, when he went to bed, I gave him the second installment on uh, Charlie Malarkey. And uh, uh, I did that for about three or four nights. And uh, uh, pretty soon I said to myself, this is not half bad. And um, I think I'll turn it into a children's book. And so I, I went over, I was working over at Crooked Lake at a friend's house, uh, my getaway house. And, uh, and I went over there one day with strictly Charlie Malarkey material and spent the day and wrote about four sentences or something. <laughs> and um, I, I said, this is not working. <laughs> so uh, what I needed was Brendan in the room. And uh, uh, so um, I called him up and he sat at my desk and I sat out here and he uh, he and I just had a conversation. What what's going on in the story? And, and then we started behaving like writers, and um, that's uh, uh, that's how it developed. It was uh, um, it was an absolutely uh, uh, work of a partnership that we uh, you know I I just couldn't do it alone. I wasn't. Uh, Brennan was the inspiration, and uh, and not and not only that, he he uh, he created a lot of the scenes. He created a lot of some I don't know a lot, but of some of the language he invented. And uh, he he was a very imaginative kid. Bill, last last question for you: When you were growing up in North Albany, what were the the children's books that really fired your imagination? Well, the ones that I remember early on were um, um, Jack London, um, Call of the Wild, um, the, maybe the Sea Wolf, I don't remember, Scarabooch, uh, oh, Sabatini, I read, I was in a whole uh, reading period of uh, um, Pirates and you know Treasure Island put me pushed me forward. Oh yeah, right. right. And um, and then then I got into Damon Runyon because he was a columnist in the Times Union, and I used to read the Times Union every day along with the Knickerbocker News and the Albany Knickerbocker Press and the Albany Evening News and the Times Union. And my uncles would bring in, and my uncle and my aunt would bring in the, the Daily News and the Daily Mirror from New York because of the racing results and Walter Winchell. And, uh, and I, so I was reading five newspapers a day, at least. And I got, you know, put on to all sorts of things like, uh, you know, the, the, <clears throat> the, the, the detective stories. And, uh, I don't know, I think I read about a thousand detective books, you know, and, and when I was in grammar school. Listen, I, I really appreciate your taking the time. And once again, we're talking kind of <clears throat> preparatory to um, a benefit that we're all three gonna take part in for Wizard's Wardrobe that's gonna be held at the new Capit Capital Repertory Theater at 251 North Pearl Street. On Monday, October 4th, the doors open at 6.15 and the program begins at seven o'clock. Uh, uh, Bill and Brendan Kennedy are, are on the program along with uh, a number of other terrific uh, authors and it's a benefit for Wizards Wardrobe, which is a, an outstanding um, a local organization that, that works to promote uh, literature, uh, the love of literature and learning overall among, among kids in the capital region. So Brendan Kennedy, Bill Kennedy, thanks so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Casey. Casey, see you all of a sudden. See you soon.